get started with this next one this match review comes from literally their name is help me please <laughs> it's their name their name is literally help me please which is really funny <laughs> um they um have 600 hours in dead by daylight so you're not quite at that point where i expect you to know most of your micro and macro fundamentals so it might be some chase stuff some pressuring gen stuff they may not be uh having quite down yet and that's totally fine that is totally okay um you are playing uh the xenomorph the xenomorph which is uh my main character uh I am a, a number four in Z world in total tail text. Um, I have uh, written the guide for the character, done a whole lot. So right person to ask. Um, you're on Temple of Purgation, which is uh, a fairly okay map for the Z world, but it's like B tier, right? Like it's not exceptional, but it's not like bad either. It's kind of in this middling zone. Some of the bushes and like trees and stuff can have some nasty collision, but also it's not a, it's not a big map and um the tunnel system is pretty all right control station spawns are fine so it's kind of it's okay it's all right all right so let's go ahead and take a look at anzi points you're using uh bamboo which is excellent on the zemur if you want to run one of three add-ons it doesn't really matter not one of <laughs> one you only run one add-on. <laughs> i run two or three uh, of three add-ons so it doesn't matter which combo which you use um mercy helmet neighbor star map or self-destruct bolt you can use double turret you can use one of the turret add-ons and the vault doesn't matter. Any combo of these works. It's typically what you want to go with. If you're looking to learn the character, there are add-ons that are good for learning and helping mitigate some issues like um, overmorph and zero rations. But keep in mind that they do reinforce bad habits-ish, so don't get too attached to them. Um, your build is mostly good, but it's kind of redundant in certain aspects. Up, uh, corrupt, fine. That makes sense to me. Um, but painters and surveillance kind of like fill the same role. And if you already have pop, it's almost like I would rather, I would just roll with one of these. Yeah, exactly. Monsieur. It's a little overkill. You don't need pop. You don't need, um, surveillance and barbecue. Um, I would swap out one of these info perks for, uh, something else here. Um, you already have self-destruct bolt. So I'd maybe throw on bamboozle for one of these. That way you can block the window as well as vaulting it faster. That could be cool. Um, uh, conversely, if you want to keep uh, surveillance, you could add an, another slowdown. Um, that way you can like see when the gen is damaged, like if it's progressing or unregressing, like painters or something. You could do that. Yeah, you also already have so much base kit information on this character. So like, that is really rough. You, I'm going to explain something to you. A lot of you guys right now are just like, so confused because I'm like freaking out over like seemingly nothing. Who can spot what's wrong with this situation? From right here, right now, I can tell you you are in a very, very unlucky situation, and it's gonna be really hard for you to come back from, and it's not your fault. Who can see the issue here? Pop quiz. <laughs> Who can see the issue here? Who can see what's what's already gone horribly wrong? Three turrets already set up. So this little counter. On the on the control station this counter on the control station tells you how many available turrets are are left for the players before maximum and it goes down every single time somebody takes turret there's already three turrets placed which means the survivors have spawned spread apart three separate survivors have spawned not only spread apart but next to gens so, so spreading apart is already good, but that also means they've spawned next to gens, because the control stations are supposed to spawn next to gens unless, you know, something's in the way and then they spawn further out. So that is incredibly unlucky. So you are on an uphill battle for something that's not even your fault. One little takeaway for everybody else, use the uh, control stations to get information about the macro sense of the match. Okay, so... Corrupt Intervention as a perk. What Corrupt Intervention is meant to do is to stop survivors from immediately being able to hop on gens in situations exactly like this. Um, however, um, to get the most value out of Corrupt, you need to chase people that are currently funneling towards your uncorrupted gens so that uh, the gen progress is delayed even further. However, you decide here to go like running into... You're corrupt, and chasing into your corrupt kind of defeats the purpose of the perk. So, I would not.
I mean, you're potentially, but like, we're not in the mind of these survivors. We don't know why they all went to grab the turrets. I, I don't think that's like a one to one that you could, could shut. I don't think it's a one one you could be like, okay, well, that's why. Maybe it's possible, but no way to tell. I think corrupt is in general just a good perk, but it's like. If you chase through it, it's just like not even helpful. Unfortunately, and this is why I don't really run corrupt, uh, you already don't have <laughs> one of your perks and it's already just gone. Deal with that, please. Please break your turret. Please break your turrets. Please, 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 please break your turrets. Please break your turrets. Lily, you're not even in your power, so there's like actually zero reason whatsoever to not break this turret. Please break that turret. Thank you. And you don't even... Okay, okay. There's a lot... Okay. There's a lot to digest here. There's a lot... There's a lot to unpack. Um... Um... <laughs> so... You enter this chase with this person. Don't break your turret, which you should have the first time that you saw the turret on you. Because especially while you're not in your power, there's like... it's It, it costs you zero dollars. Zero doll hairs. To, to go break that turret, right? So you should have done that initially. You were still in chase with a person, right? So I would have, um, I would have continued chasing that person. If you are going to make the decision to leave that chase, you have this wonderful little perk down here called Pop Goes the Weasel, which is on a timer, meaning that once it's gone, it's gone. That use of it is gone. And I might as well make it as if you were, you know, you didn't have a perk in that slot for that moment. Um, so if you're going to leave that chase, please at least get use out of your pop goes the weasel before you leave. So essentially all you did there was break one turret, put it on cooldown, and you'd even do that like optimally because you waited like two or three loops to do it. And that's it. That's that's the amount of pressure you've put on the map so far is I broke a turret. You could have started and ended a chase, put somebody on hook. You could have popped the gens. They have to redo part of that gen. But as, as of right now, all you did was just put a turret on cooldown. And there's four, so yeah. I don't have my headphones on. Oopsies. <laughs> Magic Chef. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is a bad habit that I have sometimes, that I do, is I'm so, like, locked in to use my Pop Goes the Weasel that, like, I don't look to make sure there's no turrets around. I make this mistake a lot. Just look before you kick. And the fact that you don't, you also don't get back in your tunnel to get your power back. You're just kind of like, oh, I guess I'm just chasing without it now. It's only been two minutes, but it seems like you're just extremely willing to play without your power. And I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but I'm going to get on a soapbox here. This is why most people hate Xenomorph. Not saying you in particular, the, the, the review E. This is why most people hate Xenomorph and say Xenomorph sucks. Because they just are so lackadaisical about staying in their power. And then they go, well, my character sucks. This character sucks to play. It's like, yeah, if you play Trapper without his traps, it's bad. If you play Wraith and you never cloak in and out of your cloak, yeah, he sucks. If you play Billy and never use your chainsaw, yeah, he sucks. <laughs> like, you would never do these things on other killers, so why do you do them on the Z-Morph? I don't know. I don't understand. I understand why people willingly choose to play without their power. It's so puzzling to me. Luckily, he's just unhooking in front of you, so easy pressure. See, like, if you had your power here, tail attack him going through the window, he's dead. But, alas, that is not the case. At least you get shacked fairly early on. That is a benefit. You know through surveillance that that gen hasn't been progressed yet. You have Bambol, but you also don't seem too willing to, like, vault. Just kind of odd to me. I would have vaulted that window there to cut him off. 
Because essentially you're not getting value out of one of your add-ons right now. So you're not vaulting. That being said, you're not saying much in your power, so it's not like you have access to it, but you did there in particular. You see them down on the main building, Jen. Under the turret. You're not... Okay, so you see on barbecue, or I guess you didn't. You see on barbecue that somebody's working on the main building, Jen. You see them right here. Right where the uh, the event list is on my stream. Right there. You see somebody working on that, Jen. But instead of going to there to pop that, Jen, you check a random Jen far away. I don't know why you do this. My only assumption is that you maybe just didn't see your own barbecue, which if you're not looking at your barbecue, you might as well not even have the perk. Yeah, you're wandering around like you have no idea where anybody is. You saw that guy on barbecue. Did you just not? I, I would ask if you didn't look, but you did. You were looking right at it. Strafe with your body, not with your camera. If you strafe with your body there, you would have hit it. Nice shot. That's really hard to hit because of the diagonal there. That gen at main's probably gonna go now. Oh sorry, this is this is a <laughs> that that uh lupus is very, very good for the team more. They like actually can't do anything, it's literally just they got a pre you miss. Yeah, that that what did I say? That main building gen's gonna go. You just leave that chase for some reason? Okay. If you're never sure where you want to be or where Jen's being worked on, just go in your tunnels. Is your tunnels you can hear Jen's being worked on or see footsteps of people approaching Jen's. So. If you're never sure on where you want to go, where you want to pressure, use that tool. To let your pop wind down. He just started this too. That has like no progress. And in VOP value, yeah. It's not a lot. At least I think so. I think they did at least one. Yeah, they, they, they kicked the one up on that uh, Pride Rock there. They did. I wasn't sure. I just have bad memories, so I'm not always sure either. Why is Felix just like standing there staring at you? <laughs> this is weird. Ideally, honestly, the right answer here if you want to win this game is to go back and get uh, uh, Jonah out. You leave Chase really like, like the like the slight moment something doesn't go right. I didn't have zero progress. Why'd you try to kick it? Like the moment a chase even slightly doesn't go right, you leave it. But at, when when your only slowdown right now available to you is one that you have to get like downs and hooks, the fact that you're just leaving chase so much means that you're not getting pieces of it. I mean, and Zeno's a perfect perk. Uh, Pop is a perfect perk on Zeno because Zeno has the basket info and, and map mobility to deliver Pop uses correctly and get the most value out of it. It's just not happening here. Okay, you should have strafed that whole area. You get lucky because she ends up running back into it, but if you just strafe that entire little you know, artificial hallway there, you hit her either way.
At least you know what gen they're working on. So you don't... That happens to me all the time. It was a gutsy try, but it did not work out. You do have a 3 gen at the top of the map, too. Well, you're not. You're about to not. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. You... You put zero value on staying in your power. Well, at least for your number one takeaway. You put zero value on staying in your power, and you spend, like, half this match not in your power. So, that that is, like, emergency takeaway number one. <laughs> There's also Jonah there, whose death are, but you went after Felix instead. Uh, that will explode on its own if it's not repaired. And if you have to save time, I would go after Jonah here. Turrets have to be repaired or else they, they break. Um, which is another thing that makes the Ripley's watch not as good of a pick, even if you're learning the character. Um, so I would have just let that break on its own and go get uh, Jonah. Oh, they do? Yep. That's that's why people... Uh, I think that's the reason people weigh Ripley's Watch so heavily. I already think it's silly because, like, oh, this perk I get value if I lose my power. It's still silly. But turrets have ways of breaking on their own naturally that, like... People overvaluing an add-on that gets rid of turrets, it just makes even less sense. Check out my guide! <laughs> That I wrote my almost 300 page guy that goes into all the stuff. It's pretty cool. They're in all sorts of fancy things. Once again, you just kind of leave Chase willy nilly. Uh, you have pop. Like, your only slowdown requires you to get the down and hook. But you just keep leaving Chase. And then you just came back to her. So you could have just, like, stayed in Chase. I want to add him for something I can do myself. I don't know. I've noticed that there is, like, a breed of Xenomorph player out there that plays Xenomorph, but absolutely despises the character at the same time, and I just, like, really don't understand the rationale. And one of the things they do with that is they get, like, a really... Please pop that. Thank you. Um, they get really, like, uh, egotistical and big on their britches about what add-ons they use. Emergency helmet? Bad. Don't use emergency helmet. You're lazy and you're stupid if you use that. But heck yeah, I'll use a Lambert Star Map and uh, <laughs> Ripley's Watch as a combo. Lambert Star Map is amazing. Top three add-on, but like... You're gonna, you're gonna be like, okay, well use emergency helmet so you're a bad Xenomorph when like you use Ripley's Watch. Like... <laughs> Get on that if you're just... <laughs> If you're just better at the character, you can circumvent the, the use of it, like... Honestly, that's why I was, like, congratulating some of their hits. Jonah... Jonah has been death like, this entire time. But you just keep, like, not going for him. Oh, it's bad. Not bad as in, like, it's, like, not good. It's, like, almost the opposite. What they're saying is that, like, you're bad if you use it because it... Is so good for how little effort it requires. He was just faking the DS. Also, don't worry about her. Cause she's still at that loop. Why are you just leaving? Why are you just leaving? Why? I don't get it. Oh, you didn't know where she went. That'd be why. If you had started that slightly earlier, we got that, but honestly, understandable. Don't get too invested in this chase because they do have a gen right near you that they could be doing. Not the one that's regressed because of surveillance, but the other one up on Proud Rock. Seems to like, what is that Metallia in? I'm about to get some running perks. Yep. They say that, like, unironically. You're brainless if you run Emergency Helmet on Xenomorph. You're letting her get under your skin. You're going to lose the game because of it. All it takes is Jonah somewhere working on the last gen. I don't know if that was the bug or not. It's kind of hard to see because of the uh, charges. Oh my gosh, look! Ripley's watch would have been so helpful there! What did I say? Jonah's been over here cranking in the background. 
That's supposed to leak out. If you use tin oil can, you're you're brainless. It's just something I don't understand. Yeah, you lose this game because you got so greedy to get Nia here. Yeah, the turret blew up anyway, so like, yeah, Ripley's watch would have helped there, I guess. Smile. You just don't prioritize staying in your power. You deserve this, honestly. I don't mean this like in any mean way, like, how dare you? But like, you deserve the result of the kind of game that you're having, where it's like it's been this rough for you. Because you don't prioritize staying in your power, so of course all of your chases have been really long and frustrating. <laughs> he would have he 4k reused Ripley's lot. There's just so many ways that turrets break naturally, though, like, using an add-on that does it. Just, it's just, I don't know. And it only works when you lose your power. If it was like a brown add-on that broke turrets for some like extra reason that wasn't negative for you, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be actually pretty neat. Hey, Zero Cough, how's it going? You know what gen they're on. You bring in for perks and you don't pay attention to them. You surveillance turned that gen yellow up on the hill, meaning that they're back on it. Yellow means they've unregressed it, but you're not paying attention, just like you didn't pay attention to your barbecue earlier. Pretty good, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's- You literally looked dead at it and walked away with an active pop! That Jed was close, I know he's the last guy, but like... They could finish that, and then you have to worry about the doors and potential hatch. Ah! Okay, you do find hatch, thankfully. It was very risky. That gen was pretty close to done. She does that, and she has the choice of doors and hatch. And good luck being in three different spots at once. Oh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Thing I isolation. I do have it highlighted uh, on the channel. Um, the first part of the playthrough. Also, um, I might have to pick up my uh, sister from work because uh, my mom's car broke down, so she cannot get her. Um, but. If they find another way to get her home from work, I can stay, and I might do an isolation. I might pick up that playthrough somewhere. Just depends if she can find a uh, another way. Cause I I don't live close to home anymore. I live pretty far away, so I can, but it's not gonna be. It's gonna be pretty rough. Shift end, not for a while. We still have like a few hours before a shift ends, but like I guess I don't live close anymore, so why she's running into you here. Thoughts on singularity? Um, like to play as or against? Play as are pretty fun. But uh play against, they're kind of just like really strong, so just like it feels like they just roll me unless I'm like playing with a group. Fog blocks the light. I don't. Fog blocks the light when it's far away. I think. Or do you mean obscure? Is block? No. Facing them in 1v1? That's good. Yeah, it might be harder to see far away, but block it? No. You don't show the end of your screen, it doesn't look like. Okay, so in terms of your main takeaways, um, fortunately and unfortunately, <laughs> and, and, you know, a little bit of both here. Uh, a lot of the, the, the reason that this match went the way it did is because of mistakes that you were making. Um, which meaning that if you had played, uh, if you had better habits here, this match probably would have been done in like three gens. Um, which is good in a sense because, well, everything you can, you know, everything you can you know, take and improve with here and carry into your next games, which is great. Um, your first takeaway, just the first thing that comes to mind is uh, don't, don't make sure you get use out of your pop uh, and make sure you're actually getting uses, <laughs> like actually charging your pop. Um, 
Pop Goes the Weasel is a perk that works if you have good ability to tell where the gens are, which Xenomorph does, base kit. And also, um, if you have map mobility to go deliver it, which Xenomorph also has. Um, but Pop doesn't just go off for free. You have to down and hook them, which you just kept splitting chase a bunch. So you weren't getting charges of Pop. Um, also, there were a lot of times you would just let Pop wind down and not get a use out of it at all, which is, you know, might as well just like have not have been a perk at that point. Um, so make sure if you're going to run a perk to get value out of it. Speaking of that, second takeaway, you run surveillance and barbecue, and not only is that overkill, but also you don't pay attention to your own info. Like you just don't. Like there's multiple times this match, you look straight at somebody on barbecue and you don't go to them. And it's not like, okay, well, it was a tactical choice to not go for them. There's nobody else. You have no idea where anybody else is, but you see them on barbecue, supposedly see them on barbecue, and you don't go for them for, like, zero reason. Um, same thing on, uh, like, surveillance. There's plenty of times that a gen went from white, which meant regressing, to yellow, which means somebody was on it, and you just, like, walk away. You just, like, you don't pay attention to it, like, at all. Um... Which, you know, again, if you're not if you're not going to pay attention to the info on the info perks, it might as well be like as if you're not like not running any perks at all in those slots. So if you're going to be running info perks, make sure you're paying attention to the auras on the info perks. Uh, otherwise, they're just not worth running. Um, also, the, the very, very, uh, you know, it's a common takeaway, but like Jonah was death hook very early on. Like he was a death hook at like the beginning of two gens. But for some reason, despite seeing Joda multiple times later in this game, you choose to go after Kate. You choose to go after Felix. You choose to go after Nia. Like, you had somebody who was death hook right near you for most of the end game there, and you just kind of, like, let him go. If you had got him sacrificed earlier, this match would have been, like, way, like way easier for you. But you kind of just, like, start going after everybody, almost, almost everybody else instead. Uh, of the person that was actually death hook, which is extremely risky and not time efficient. So I would focus on those three. One out. 